Hey guys, I'm here with a uh, movie review for The Conjuring 2. So this is the 2016 sequel to uh, the amazing original Conjuring. I would say the original Conjuring is like in my top 10 favorite horror movies ever that I've seen. And this one was actually better. I would say it's better. I'm actually giving this one the exact same score as the other one. And when I complete this franchise, I might adjust the first one. But I feel like the first one was like better. Like they didn't like copy each other really. It, it was very different, I felt. Yes, it was still a, a possession story, a haunting thing, but I don't know. It did not feel like I watching the same movie a second time, which often sequels will do. This felt way... Like the first movie was um, very gritty and um, uh, almost like had like a dark edge to it of like the harsh realities of um, like... I guess because it's like based off a real story and there's like suicide involved. The first one just has like a different tone. So that movie was like a very serious, nitty gritty, tension filled, and uh, genuinely scary um, adventure. And uh, this one is more of a uh, carnival ride. And uh, it's a good one. It's a great carnival ride. Don't get me wrong. This one is fast paced, very intense. Um, a little bit easier to digest and has superior visuals and superior sets and uh, better villains, if we want to call them that. Because this is a cinematic universe and we get introduced to a lot of brand new villains that I really liked. Um, so yeah, I had a great time with The Conjuring 2. I did not expect it to be this good, but I should, uh, I should put more trust in James Wan because he has never, he has never given me a bad movie. He's, I don't, I don't know, I've never given one of his movies a 10 out of 10, and I wanted to so badly, um, but he still p makes really good quality products, so it's okay if it's not perfect, trust me, not everything has to be perfect, so this movie is basically another house possession story, but the difference this time is that um, the Warrens have to, like, they really have to convince the church this time. I mean, they had to do it in the first movie as well, but they like they have to go an even further extra mile this time to try and convince the church because this particular house has a bunch of, like a media frenzy and people think it's hocus pocus. But um, you know, Ed and Lorraine are very good people and they kind of sense that something's wrong, so they go to save the day. They go to London and we're following this uh, British family. And I'll mention um, the youngest one, the main character of this movie, uh, Janet. The actor for her is actually American. My God, she had the most convincing British accent I've ever heard from an American, period. Doesn't even come close. Like, Daniel Craig doing an American accent doesn't work at all. But I guess Americans can do British and it translates a bit better. So I just thought that was really interesting. Like, I genuinely, I'm, I'm shocked that uh, she's American. That is just crazy to me. But, um, yeah. So Janet is basically the conduit for the spirits in the house, and they, uh, there's three different antagonists in this. There's the nun, which has some sort of connection to Ed and Lorraine personally, and it's also important to know that she is extra powerful in the fact that she can cloud uh, Lorraine's vision, and we'll talk about that more later. Um, and I don't know exactly what she wants, but she's just like an evil spirit who is uh, trying to, you know, well... If we go by the insidious rules, spirits just want life again. They want to be real. So she would probably just wants to permanently possess uh, Janet and have her way with her, basically. Uh, the second villain is this, um, this old man spirit who refuses to leave the house. And it was said that he uh, died from like a brain hemorrhage in, while sitting in a specific chair. And that chair is like another conduit when you want to communicate with him. That's one of the best places in the house to be. And then the third and final villain is uh, the Crooked Man, who is attached to this uh, little music box thing that uh, one of the children, Billy, uh, owns. And it's this really creepy like music box thing that just goes round and round, and there's this like children's song that you sing along. And then once you see, uh, it's like this music box with visuals, and then once the visuals stop, the Crooked Man materializes and he comes to life. Again, just like the nun, um, I know even less about the Crooked Man, but that's fine. We already have like we already have a main plot villain, which is the uh, old the old guy who refuses to leave the house, and then we have two side villains that are just kind of here for the ride, and they're here to scare the audience, and I love them for that. I like the, both their designs. 
Like they are genuinely terrifying looking and uh, I thought they were really cool. The visuals and um, the, C the CGI is used sparingly in this and it's really effective. Um, I like IT Chapter 2, but like one of the biggest problems with that movie is the over-reliance on CGI. So this movie only uses CGI when it absolutely has to, and that makes me believe it so much more because I'm not even like, I'm not even thinking about the fact it's computer generated because it happens so little. So yeah, I really, really like this movie. I love the fact that Ed and Lorraine are at the center stage now. I really think they're just awesome characters, so I'm really invested in them. I love how they just, at the end of every movie, they go back to their little artifact room and they seal things away in there. Um, I just, I want to see everything in that room come to life, which does happen down the line. The one other movie I've seen in this universe, I remember that happened and I'm really looking forward to it. But what I'm trying to say is the, orig the original Annabelle, which I watched yesterday, was so watered down and disappointing. I mean, the main characters did not even have last names, and Ed and Lorraine Warren are, I mean, you hear Patrick Wilson's voice one time, but you never see his face, and they're barely reference, so it was, it was just a mess. I did not like the original Annabelle at all. You do see, um, you see, you do see Annabelle in this briefly if you're wondering. I feel like that's not a, uh, spoiler. That's actually gonna, maybe I'll keep you on your toes by telling you that. Yes, you will see that creepy ass doll in here at some point, but, um, yeah, uh, it was just a great time. I really like the British family as well. I mean, just in, again, comparing it to, um, Annabelle, which had many characters with the last names, uh, like, this family is just, it's just night and day. Those two people, that last movie, were just forgettable, disposable, offers nothing, means nothing. And this family, you get quite attached to, you can tell they're really good actors. I mean, the child actors are very good. I would go as far as saying the child actors were better than the adult actors in this. I mean, the adult actors weren't bad, it's just I felt the children were that good. They were way better. They were able to convey true, genuine fear on screen. That really impressed me. So, yeah, um, I will say the one negative I have is, yes, the, um, the vision. I did not like the whole Lorraine's vision being clouded. It felt too convenient and like writer's trickery for me because they just needed a reason to uh, create this hoax and like the, the doubt, to create some doubt in a few of the characters and stuff. But uh, that's really the only negative I have. I cannot think of one other thing, really. They almost screwed up, but they didn't. There was multiple opportunities for either Ed and or Lorraine to disbelieve the family. And if either of them said, like, I don't believe them, that would have killed the film for me. But they didn't. The, tr the characters were true to themselves, and despite all the non-believers, they remained true and they still believed them, so thank you for that. Um, I will also mention I really liked... Um, Oh, it's, it's blanking in my mind now. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I really like that while this movie has some tropes, of course, all every horror movie ever does, um, this one actually does kind of take a different angle on a few things that I did take notice of as well. So I liked that this film did not move houses. Every single house possession movie I've ever watched has the family move locations at some point. But this entire movie is basically a bottle location in that single house. And I like that they don't even talk about moving. Like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it feels like they're respecting the audience. It's like, yeah, obviously every single time they move, the spirit just follows them. So I like that they didn't even attempt to do that. And another, in those other movies as well, um, you'll have like the random music players and TVs turning themselves on and you'll get that like novelty at the start of a house possession movie and then when they move houses they sort of restart the movie halfway through and you start doing that same thing again so this is just more of a yeah carnival ride roller coaster that is very intense and has a lot more battles and like action for lack of better terms so yeah and i also like that the family um the actual british family themselves the hodgins uh family is um uh, I like that they didn't try to gaslight each other at all, really. I mean, they basically all unanimously knew that ghosts or spirits were real, and they did not, like, hesitate for a second, really. Well, I guess they did hesitate for a second, but it was only a second. Like, the police and the mom just actually witnessing paranormal events happen right in front of their eyes really, really sold me on the whole experience and helped me like it a lot more. Because it's, again, avoiding that trope of, only one character sees the paranormal events and they try to 
convince someone else that it's happening and um, the other person just says, oh, it's all in your head or just go get some rest or something. They don't do that here. Yes, they do do like a hoax thing where the public doesn't believe them, but like, that's at least believable. That would happen in real life. But I just loved that this movie did something a little bit different and just had the entire family sleep in the same room together on the floor and just kind of, you know, have each other's backs and work through it together. So the more I talk about it, I want to move up uh, my score, but I'm not going to because, you know, it does have some of those tropes. It does kind of, you know, overly rely on some... Uh, um, predictable jump stairs and stuff like that. So it's not a perfect movie. As much as I want to call it that, it's not, obviously. So The Conjuring 2 is going to get a 9 out of 10. It delivered in absolutely every single area I wanted it to. And it makes me believe in this universe a lot more than something like Annabelle did. So thanks so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you next time.